Angelo there. So today I'm going to show you my basic bath bomb recipe. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, the pictures at the beginning of the video, you'll see all the necessary ingredients and tools. So I'm going to kind of walk you straight through here step by step. So this is kind of a half cup. And I'm actually going to do three cups. So that's one cup. Two cups, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. All right, so that is my baking soda that we're putting in first. Um, a lot of different people do it a little bit different either way. So what I want to do here is I've got it in this little strainer and I want to get it through because the reason for that is you don't want clumps. So if you get those clumps out, if they get in your mix, it's gonna you're gonna have very colorful pebbles. So you definitely kind of want to get in there. And the harder stuff you can just go ahead and dump out. So what we have here next is our witch hazel. And I'm gonna be blooming my dye, which I have here, Mr. Nature Soap. This is yellow. I'm gonna make little, it says uh, yellow six, so this is actually gonna be orange. This is a uh, batch certified dye. So with batch certified dyes, you definitely wanna make sure that you're using your micro scoops. These are very tiny. And you kinda of just wanna get, for about three cups of baking soda, a full micro scoop is perfect. So you just kind of just want to get that one in there. If you blend colors, just kind of eye it a little bit and, you know, make sure that you're not using a full micro scoop and something else like of color. So if you're wanting to blend to make a purple color, make sure you use very minimal amounts of the um, batch certified blues with your um, red number 27s. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix it in. Just give it a good mix. You see how those colors just kind of clump in there? You just kind of want to mix it in. Now, usually for this, for these, I wear gloves, so don't stain my hands, but I'm kind of out of gloves at the moment. But that's fine. My hands are washed and clean. So we'll be getting in there with our hands to dig at this in just a second. I'll give it a couple of sprays. It's kind of fun little science trick with uh, the dyes. And I put about five sprays in there, and I'm going to have to go back in and spray a little bit more. But what we're doing here is we're uh, blooming the dye in the baking soda. And the reason for that is uh, with batch certified dyes, you want to make sure that you're blooming the color before you put it in with anything else. Other dyes, uh, more oil-soluble dyes, um, you can do it with um, your carrier oil that you use. Um, I haven't done that yet. I just like blooming the dye. To me, it seems to be the easier way to do it, but I'm always up for a challenge. So here we go. A couple, three more sprays, and this is going to differ any time that you do this. Sometimes I only have to use two or three sprays total to get this damp enough. And then sometimes I have to use up to 10 sprays of witch hazel. It depends on the humidity of the area that you're in. I may have to use a spray or much, a little bit there. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to give it another good spray here. Activate that color really nice. And mix it a little bit more. And don't be afraid to get in there with your hands. Batch certified dye will maybe stain your hands a little bit. It washes off just as easily. Blues, blues are harder. Reds are harder. But batch certified yellows are actually not that bad. So I'm just going to kind of get in here and I'm going to rub it a little bit. I've seen people use it with both hands. If you do not have a bowl big enough to rub it with both of your hands over top of it, just do it like this. You can just kind of press it in. And that's all I'm really doing here. And I'm just making sure that I'm getting up on the sides there, getting into the edges of my bowl, getting all of it in, mixing it really well. And I kind of turn the bowl as I go as well so that I'm really 
getting every inch and you want to really make sure that that's in there if you see any kind of streaking and it's hard to see in this video but see there's some streaks in there if you see any kind of streaking that means that your color has not fully developed into the baking soda yet so you want to make sure that you you just keep on moving it And right now the consistency that I'm working with is like wet sand so if you can move your palm across it like that that's awesome if you can move it in your hands together and you know kind of do that oh that was a streak that was a really really big streak so let's see so I got some color I gotta move so you just kind of sit tight keep moving it and you'll get that all mixed in there really well I'm not seeing too much white anymore which is good I'm not seeing too many more streaks so it looks like my color is fully in there and I'm gonna give this a moment or two to dry which hazel is pretty good it dries not as quickly as alcohol there's some people who use alcohol when they're blooming in, in their blooming method because it dries faster I like mine a little bit wet even when I start uh, this process because it helps everything kind of mix a lot easier together. But this will actually sit because in my second bowl is where I'm going to put my active ingredients. Alright, so now we're going to start with the active ingredients. First thing I want to put in is my citric acid. So I'm going to be putting in one cup of citric acid. There's that guy. He's good to go. Let me fix up my bag there. All right, now I want a little bit of cornstarch. This is going to be one fourth of a cup of cornstarch. Now, I kind of, when I first started making bath bombs, people were using two and three cups I think that a fourth of a cup is a really really good start because what this does is it literally just kind of makes the water feel softer a little silkier so um, if you've got hard water issues this might be a, a good add-in for you next we're going to add in a cream of tartare so I'm going to go ahead and get my bag out actually because that one's empty and the reason for the cream tartar is we have um, let me get the right thing here um, you can use kalo and cl clay what this does is it actually uh, hardens the bath bombs and you just need a little bit for this so for that I'm using a half a tablespoon um, so it's not a lot. You don't have to use a ton. There's also a really unique product out there that's called Bubble Cake Hardener from Crafter's Choice. It's another really good one. I like that one a lot more, mainly because it's not as expensive as buying a ton of cream of tartar. And when you're using a half of a tablespoon in a recipe like this, it gets to be kind of expensive. So um, if you get the opportunity, look that up. So we've got our active ingredients here. And they're in our sifter. We're gonna go ahead and sift those down in. And I kind of just give it a little tap because the wiring's there. And go ahead and just get her all in there. All right. So sometimes that citric acid gets to be a little harder than it needs to be. Uh, if you've got any hard granules, make sure that you get those out. And I just kind of mix this up. So all I'm doing is getting a good mix in there so that it's, when I add that to the baking, the dyed baking soda, uh, this is ready to go. So that's all mixed up. We'll move on to the next one. Alright, so now we're going to mix in the active ingredients there into our baking soda. Go ahead and get this guy out of the way. And we just kind of mix it in. Now this is going to be a little lumpy and everything, so you may have to get in again with your hands. I definitely caution you to definitely wear gloves. Again, I'm not wearing gloves mainly because I ran out. 
but for hygienic reasons, I've been washing my hands between each one of these takes, so that way our bath bombs stay nice and hygienic and clean. All right, so that's actually really, really good looking. So that's really nice. And the baking soda is still just a little wet. That's okay because we're getting ready to add our wet ingredients. You don't want this to be too wet from the witch hazel from earlier because then the active ingredients will react and then you'll have what I call dud bombs and those bath bombs will not float or do anything fun. They'll just get in your bath water and that's about it. may color it a little bit but that's all. Okay, so that's good and mixed in. Now for the wet ingredients. Okay, so here we are. We have our carrier oil, and what I'm using today is coconut oil. I really, really enjoy coconut oil in my um, in my work. I think it's a great carrier oil. Um, I use, and this is the hard part. Sometimes I use two full tablespoons. But today, because humidity is kind of low, I'm only going to have to use one. Uh, next, I'm adding in a tablespoon of polysorbate 80. And what this does is, is that it emulsifies your bath bomb mix. And what does this mean? Okay, so you can't mix oil and water together, correct? Because oil will sit on top of the water. Well, what polysorbate 80 does is that it emulsifies the oil in the water so that it actually blends. So when your bath bomb hits your water, not all the oil is sitting on top of your water, but it actually is mixing it in so that you're actually getting that all over feeling and not just on the top of the water that you're using. All right. And then this is per weight and I'm only going to use a portion of this fragrance oil. Usually, depending on the fragrance oil, you can use almost a full tablespoon there. And I left it a little bit off because this one is a little bit more dense. And this is where you have to check your IFRA ratings. So you kind of know exactly how much you need to put in there. Uh, I should be measuring by um, grams but I tend to still like to use cups and spoons and those things. So the fragrance that we've chose today is Amber Noir. So that's all mixed in. So the hard part is now mixing it in with my dry stuff without making my bath bomb mix activate. So this is what you wanna do. So you, this is actually still pretty good. It's starting to get a little sticky. And we just want to pour just a little bit in at a time and just kind of work fast. This is kind of one of those deals where you you, you have a limited amount of time that you have to work with to get this in here. But you want to make sure that you're only doing it at very little increments because you don't want it to activate your mix. And once it activates your mix, it is no good. So you're looking for the perfect, and this is actually starting to form really nice. Um, you're looking for the perfect mix here. You don't want it too wet. You don't want it too dry. Too dry, your bath bombs will crack. And that's no fun. Uh, they won't feel well when you're doing this. So you kind of have to gauge on it. And this is turning really well, actually. I like how this is already forming really good. And we just kind of get a little bit in there. And I kind of just leave my hand, one hand propped with the little bowl here sitting on the side to, to act when I need to and my other dominant hand to be the mixer. And if you need to, set the bowl down. Mix with both hands. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. All right. And if your mix starts to feel like it might be too wet, Add just a little bit of baking soda, maybe half a cup, and that will make all the difference in the world. You can see that I've got a couple of things going on there. 
though I love the smell. I will say a great distributor if you're looking for fragrance oils. Candle Science has some really good ones. Today we're using their Amber Noir and it is absolutely wonderful. I really like that. I think I'm gonna have to buy some more for my candles. So okay, so we got it mixed. And what you want to do is you kind of want to ball it together. Give it a little drop. And I'm about a foot here, two foot. That's good. Okay. Maybe a little wetter than I anticipated. So I may be adding just a little bit more baking soda to this. So it's not as wet. Alright, so I added a little bit more baking soda. I figured I would go ahead and pause the video there. But you can see, we're all mixed in now. We're all good. It's a little lighter now. It was a little sticky there for a moment, but the baking soda really helped. So, now we have our molds, and I'm using these, these round molds. These are 2.7 diameter bath bomb molds. You can get these pretty much anywhere. I think I bought my first set off Amazon, and it was not expensive. So, you know, if you're looking for some of these, these are just aluminum. They're not the stainless steel versions, but they get the job done. So there are different ways and different techniques that one can mold with a bath bomb. Uh, depending in the winter months, I have a harder time getting things to mold and set really good. Whenever you've got your filled both of your mold pieces and you press it together, you know, kind of go all the way around it and press really hard. Get it really really good because you really want it to meet in the middle so and just kind of give it a little squeeze here on one edge you, you want it to come off smooth that's beautiful and then we have this one and if it doesn't come off smooth and it breaks apart you know refill try again and if it continues to keep doing that after three or four tries maybe you need to add a little bit more baking soda maybe your stuff is a little wet that happens ah beautiful be patient sometimes patience will give you everything you need there we go there's one formed bath bomb so some things we want to touch note on here um, we were talking about activation and everything with the bath bombs you don't want them to activate um, when they're wet and everything because they kind of turn into dud bath bombs you don't want that to happen and then you have bath bombs that just don't work very well. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually just kind of overfilling just a little bit here inside of these uh, molds. And I kind of give them like, you know, this like little kiss to kind of like kind of grind it together just a little bit. Not a lot. And then when you get close to the edges meeting, give them that good push. You can hear me leaning against my counter to push in on this. And then I kind of go to go through with my finger and then wipe around the edge so it's a little more cleaner when it comes out of the mold. So give it a little, give it a little love. Some of them need a little more love than others. Sometimes they come right off. Those are great days. You, those are perfect weather days. The humidity is like zero. It's like 70 degrees and your melt your your mix is just perfect then some days the humidity is a hundred percent on those days I do recommend probably not making bath bombs you know if you have a custom order or something like that then by all means give it a go and we'll go ahead and set it right down in there but yeah if it's a if it's a pretty uh, pretty heavy humidity outside uh, you're probably going to have a couple of complications getting your bath bombs to mix, you know, at least well and not activate. Uh, dehumidifiers are really great. If you uh, are working in a space, just turn on your dehumidifier. Um, some places uh, have recommendations. I simply just do not do it on super humid days. I have not bought one of those fun dehumidifiers yet but maybe once down the road I will definitely give it a go because I live in Kentucky and in the summers it gets super humid usually about oh June <laughs> and it stays that way until oh October 
All right, and these are turning out really, really nice. So, you know, had I not added the baking soda, these would have stuck to the sides, they would have crumbled, and they would have broken half. So, so sometimes you just use your judgment on that. If it looks and feels too wet, if it's wetter than damp sand, go ahead and add a little bit more baking soda. It's not going to hurt a thing. All right. So what I'm using, and a lot of people use a lot of different methods, but to be honest with you, I have a giant turkey pan, uh, one of those aluminum turkey pans that I put my bath bombs in. I line that with uh, parchment paper so that my bath bombs don't stick to anything. It works really great. Um, I used to put um, paper towels down, but as you could notice in the summer times, you know, these would come they would dry overnight and then I'd go to pick them up and they'd be stuck to the paper towels so do not suggest using paper towels learn from my mistakes there this is getting ready to come off oh see and that happens when that happens just crumble it up all right start again I'll just kind of give it a good mix in there. All right, now. You know, sometimes you press it too hard, it'll stick to the sides of that mold, and it's just not going to come out. No matter how patient you are and how much you do that, sometimes, and I've heard some different techniques, uh, people have said that they don't push as hard when they're pushed together. So, if that works for you, awesome. Take that advice as you can. Personally, I find that if I do not press my bath bombs in their molds together very hard, that they do not stay together very well. And then you might have one crack down the middle. And that's no fun. So again, we're just going to try one more time here. I think the other side's going to do it on me. And you know, and if you do it a couple of times, I had a couple of bombs came out just fine, but it looks like I may have to add a little bit more baking soda to my to my thing here because it's still a little wetter than it needs to be and you can kind of tell see there's a little crack in the seam don't worry about those because you can press those in and that's perfectly fine there's that you just want to be kind of easy around those see look came right out there beautiful as ever some people like to use egg cartons um, for their bath bombs they'll cut them in half put their bath bombs in them uh, so that they don't dent too much. My molds already have like a, a, a different indention on the bottom of them that's kind of flat so I'm not too worried about them. Sometimes you get uh, bath bombs that have fat butts and that's okay too. <laughs> as long as you're happy with it that's all that matters. And if you want perfectly round bath bombs, whew, you know the challenge is up to you. And if you do get perfectly around bath bombs, let me know. I'm all about learning some new tricks. But I've been making bath bombs for about three years now. I am not by no means an expert. This is more or less just a tutorial for those who are just out there looking for something that might help them, that might benefit them. And I don't mind sharing because, well, if it gets you out there and it gets you motivated to do something, why not? So we got another wonderful bath bomb there. This batch generally makes anywhere between six and eight bath bombs. Uh, it is not an exact number. I've had it as little as five before. Um, and the reason for that is, is you're working with the weather, you're working with humidity on those days. If it's super humid, you're lucky to get about five or six bath bombs with this recipe. If it's not so humid, you might get anywhere between seven or eight different bath bombs, which is really awesome. So, again, watch your humidity whenever you're starting your bath bomb journey. Keep an eye on it. Most of your weather apps will have that available for you. And most of the time, if you're just watching the weather, they'll, they'll usually let you know, especially if it's pretty high. So... And what we'll do with these, after I get done pressing them into their molds, 
cleaning them up here. I'll put them into their pan. And I actually I have a lid over top of them. Because depending upon the fragrance that you're putting on in your bath bombs. And you don't, by the way. You do not have to add fragrance if you don't want to or you don't feel comfortable with it. It's totally up to you. But uh, afterwards, I'll actually get like the top for the... Uh, it's like a little plastic covering that I put over top of these. So they're not... The scents aren't dissipating into the house the rest of the night because depending on the scent that you're making it could be very interesting I'm gonna get a good lot out of this mix today this is a good mix so we're kind of getting to the ward the end of our mix here we're doing pretty good um, bath bombs generally take anywhere once you have all your supplies together uh, and you get the process started this will take you probably you know 20 30 minutes um, the hardest part the time consuming part is this part right here where you're molding and unmolding your bath bombs all right that's actually pretty handy these are coming out beautiful so happy about these I kind of go in and press in on the sides just a little bit to kind of give it that extra little bit of security because I kind of want it to, you know, be complete. Y'all, I have made six bath bombs with this lot today, so this is awesome. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's eight. Today it looks like it's going to be seven. And seven is a lucky number, so there we go. So these bath bombs are actually going to be mica painted, and you can watch that video, uh, the ones that I did with the uh, Jason masks. Uh, but these are going to be mica painted as pumpkins. So I'm going to make little jack-o'-lantern faces on these, just for something fun to do. It's Halloween, so... I get very excited about making a lot of fun Halloween stuff. And this Amber Noir is fantastic. So. Some people, uh, when they're having trouble getting their molds to unstick, they'll take a uh, metal spoon and they'll tap along the edges. I have found this helps sometimes whenever I'm trying to unmold. Uh, but then again... This works for me too. Maybe one day when I get terrible arthritis from doing it this way, I'll end up having to use the spoon method. But this seems to work for me right now. So I'll just keep unmolding there. And voila, right out the bomb. Oh, isn't that nice? Now you see that I still have a little bit extra there. What I'm gonna do, um, always test your products. So if you're going to be selling these or giving them to a friend or anything fun like that um, which you'll need is just half of this right here and half the mold oh, I got a little chunk that decided to escape okay so what I do here and these are just like little testers for me so if I've got a little like stir right there let's go ahead and fill that in now this is kind of a, a, a science, so if this breaks apart on you a couple of times, don't feel bad. It's taken me a long time to be able to figure this one out. So I just kind of fill half that up there with what was pretty much left over from the batch. And I'm making what is a tester. So what I'll do here is I'm filling this and then I'll pull this out and let it dry just with my bath bombs too. And then I will take it and I'll after it dries make like a little test with it it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be perfect but it's bath bomb right and then I'll just use that as my tester to verify that it does what I want it to do which is it disperses the color and the fragrance the way that I want it to and that's it that's really all of it um, so if you have any questions, please uh, put those in the comments. Hit the like if you've learned something new today. Um, I'll come back with a picture in probably in a day uh, with the uh, bath bombs 
painted, so just be on the lookout there. Thank you again. Y'all have a wonderful day.